What is up, Sooner Nation? I am Casey Mallon, and you are now in a Sooner state of mind. Make sure you like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. With NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing, Bet Online has you covered with all the up to the second odds, news, and scores. With additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile, you can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Sooner state of mind, family. The quest for complete hydration is still in effect. I've had at least one glass of water every day this year. Not to toot my own horn, but gurgle, gurgle, beep, beep. Let's go one more. Mmm. Yeah, I'm a weirdo. What are you going to do about it? Well, party over. Oops, out of time. The last fiesta of the season is behind us. And we are now almost officially out of games, except for the Senior Bowl and the East-West Shine game, stuff like that. We will take a look at those closer to game time. But for now, let's go back to Houston where the Washington Huskies had a problem and the Michigan Wolverines finished the perfect season with 34-13 win. Michigan Wolverines are your national champions. Pretty good season, almost perfect. While it wasn't a great game, it was a little closer than the score would indicate. First off, got to show some love to Sharon Moore, our former Sooner and current Michigan offensive coordinator. Moore held it together when Harbs was on suspension and had them Wolverines running all over the Huskies. Early and often, that Michigan run game was a problem for UW. On the opening drive of the game, Michigan racked up 70 yards rushing, including 41 for Donovan Richards on his first touch of the game. Dude looked fast. He didn't only look fast, he was fast. Explosive. And when he started out, that lane was clogged, popped it outside, gone, untouched. Not even five minutes in, and the Wolverines were up 7-0. First Washington possession of the night, they moved the ball, got it down there, but they had to settle for a field goal, a 25-yard field goal. Moved that ball all the way down to the eight, but could not punch it in. Brutal. Ensuing Michigan possession, even more. Donovan Edwards, another huge run, this time 46-yard touchdown. The Fighting Harbaugh's up 14-3. Looks like it's going to be a runaway. Sticking with the hydration plan. I told you that, people. Huskies finally got it going, scoring a touchdown before halftime. Cutting into Michigan's lead, down just 17-10. But the very first play of the second half. Penix drops back. He gets his ankle crushed by one of his linemen. Forces an errant throw. Will Johnson picks it off. Michigan takes over. Deep in Husky territory. UW defense stepped up. Short field was still able to get a stop. Held Michigan to a short field goal. And from that moment on, Washington's defense settled in and was pretty good. They forced punts on the next three Michigan possessions, giving Penix and that Huskies offense a chance. Fourth quarter, UW down by seven. Huskies finally connect on a big play. Penix to Rome Odunze for 32 yards down to the Michigan 35. We're in action, baby. 
but there's a flag on the play holding on you, Dub. And there seem to be a lot of very costly penalties on that you dub offense, specifically the offensive line, most of them pre-snap penalties. Those are drive killers putting you back behind the chains. Just can't overcome that. We know firsthand how hard it is with a holding penalty or a false start. It's brutal. Nonetheless, the penalty wipes out the play, forces the Huskies to punt. The very next play, McCarthy hits Loveland for a 41-yard completion. Blake Corum finishes that drive with a 12-yard TD run. And that was it for any chance for the Huskies to get back into the game. Michigan took over from that point on both sides of the ball. Corum added another rushing touchdown. And the Wolverines added many, many more hits on Penix. And Michigan ended the night as national champions with absolutely nobody having it better than them. Dylan Johnson, he was out there for the Huskies, but you could tell he wasn't anywhere near 100%. Been such a big part of what they've done all season long. He only had 33 yards on 11 carries. The rest of the team combined for 18 yards on six carries. That's not even counting the negative five yards for Penix. And even though Michigan only sacked Penix once, he was hassled all night. Never able to get comfortable in the pocket. Constant pressure from Michigan. I mean, constant pressure. And then most of the time, they were only sending four, sometimes only sending three, doing it without the blitz. They just ate up that Huskies O-line and made it very tough for Penix to get anything going. And as sharp as Michael Penix was against Texas, two S's, he was nowhere near that level of precision on Monday. Penix Jr. had 90 completions the entire game against Texas. He had nine before the end of the second quarter versus Michigan. And all season long, the Huskies lived off the big play. Michigan shut it all down. Odunze did have one catch for 44 yards. But other than that, just four grabs for 43 yards. Penix missed him wide open a couple times, made a couple bad reads. Part of that was because the pressure was just on him all night long, making things very difficult. But as good as he looked against the horns, it just it didn't look the same. Part of that was the pressure. These Huskies didn't have a single run go for more than nine yards. And other than that 44-yard play to Odunze, the Huskies didn't have another play go for more than 15 yards. It's tough to get it done against a defense like that when you have to move the ball and there are no big plays. There were some out there to be had. It was just off for the Huskies. It was not their night. But you have to give it up to that Wolverines defense. Washington, just two for 14 on third down, two for five on fourth down, 20 rushes for 46 yards. That's only 2.3 per carry. Help Penix to 53% passing, only one touchdown, two interceptions, and they did not give him a clean pocket all night. Just overwhelming defense by the Wolverines. And you know what? If Penix was going to struggle, I'm completely stoked that his struggles came this week against the Wolverines and not last week against the Horns. They still put that beat down on Texas. And now all those Horns, WH, will be crying all offseason how, oh, it should have been them versus Michigan and how they would have crushed the Wolverines. That didn't happen. Them dogs sent them sad Bevos home losers. And even though there's always 
time to hate Texas. I am in full digression. Let me get it back on topic. Let's go ahead and flip it over to that Michigan offense. Their run game was outstanding. 303 yards on 38 carries. That's almost eight yards a carry. Pretty quiet night for McCarthy. Quiet but clean. Had the huge run early to pick up the first on a long third down. And just didn't make any mistakes. Did what was asked of him. Handed the ball off a lot. But made a handful of plays when he really needed it. So McCarthy finishes his Michigan career 27-1 and as a starter. That is pretty good. That's what I like more than stats. Did he throw a lot? No. Wasn't asked to. He led the team. He won the game. He got it done. That's what's important. Although it will be interesting to see how this game impacts where these two quarterbacks end up being drafted. Until Monday, Penix had been like flying up draft boards, and maybe he still will. Not sure how high McCarthy will go, but I fully expect both of these guys to be on NFL rosters next year. Speaking of next year, with the Huskies joining the Big Ten, Huskies and Wolverines will face off in Seattle at Husky Stadium on October 5th. Not too shabby. That place will be rocking, literally, when it's a packed house and they get it going. Whole stadium shakes. Pretty cool. So the final top 10 rankings for this season goes a little something like this. Your undefeated national champion, Michigan Wolverines at one, followed by Washington, Texas, Georgia, Bama, FSU, Oregon, Mizzou, Ole Miss, and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Lots of. Big Ten in there and lots of SEC in there. Not sure that I think Texas should be ranked in front of Georgia, but whatever. It really doesn't matter at this point. The good news now we are all undefeated, baby. Everybody's in the race. And next year, coming with some major changes, we're talking mega conference realignment. And we'll have a full show to dive into that later on. But what's got me even more stoked than that? 12-team playoff, baby. How sweet is that? I cannot wait. So why wait if we don't have to? Let's go ahead and look at the odds for next season. Georgia opens as the betting favorite to win the Natty next year at plus 350. They're followed by Bama at plus 550. Ohio State at 800. Texas at 850. The Champs, Michigan at 10 to 1. Oregon at 12 to 1. LSU 15 to 1. Ole Miss 16 to 1. FSU 18 to 1. Penn State and Notre Dame both come in at 25 to 1. Clemson at 33 to 1. USC at 35 to 1. Where are my damn Sooners? Oh, here they are. Sooners come in at 40 to 1 odds to win the Natty next year. Jackson Arnold's first season running the show. The Sooners' first season in the SEC. Got a few bucks to spare. Go ahead and throw it down. Lock it in just in case. If the magic happens, you want to make money off it, don't you? You know what, though? It is kind of weird that we didn't begin the show with another coaching change for the University of Oklahoma. Oh, snap. <laughs> You're never going to believe it, but we have yet another coaching change at the University of Oklahoma. Ted Roof is out as defensive coordinator for the Sooners. Roof and the Sooners mutually agreed to part ways. 
Apparently, Roof was offered another position on the staff that did not come with the title of defensive coordinator, but Roof chose to move on. I'm not sure where he's going to land yet. I'm sure we will find out soon. The Sooners finished the 2022 season 98th in scoring defense, 30 points a game, 121st in total defense, 460 yards a game. And even though the Sooners defense was much improved in 2023, got that thing down to 46th in scoring D and 78th in total defense, ultimately it still wasn't where it needed to be. Sooners were very good in some areas, second interceptions and sixth in turnovers, but they finished 10th in the Big 12 in sacks. And that was part of the problem, that and finishing games. They had large stretches of outstanding defense. The goal line stance against Texas the pick six against BYU. And even though they had those stretches, a complete game was not in the regular rotation. Start to finish, domination, pockets of it, yes. The majority of games, yes, but not a full complete game head to toe. That is the hope moving forward, that that's what they bring each and every week. I'm sure you're going to give up some points. It is the SEC, but... Need the defense to consistently play at that certain level. And that's what is to be expected. And the word is that the new defensive coordinator will be Zach Alley. Zach Alley is currently the Jacksonville State defensive coordinator. It's considered a rising star amongst defensive minds in college football. Only 29 years old. Zach Alley worked as a GA at Clemson from 2015 through 2018. Then he was hired as Boise State's co-special teams coordinator and outside linebackers coach in 2019. He was with the Broncos for two seasons before he was hired as the DC and linebackers coach at Louisiana Monroe or Louisiana Monroe. One season later, he took the same position at Jacksonville State. In 2023, the Gamecocks' first FBS season, Alley led a defense that ranked 7th nationally in tackles for loss, 8th in turnovers, 10th in sacks, 15th in TFLs, 22nd in 3rd down defense, and finished tied for 49th in total defense, allowing just over 361 yards a game. That's seventh in tackle for loss yards and 15th in TFLs. Now I'm assuming the moment we are done recording and release this show, the announcement will come. Hey, it's official. Either way, we will get you dialed in once something actually does become official. Sooners also lost offensive analyst Matt Wells. Wells will be the co-OC at Kansas State next year. He's definitely going to be missed. But that's what happens when you have great coaches on your staff. They get plucked, and they go on to bigger and better roles. So good for Wells. We also got word where another former Sooner will be headed. This is the player varietal. Oklahoma transfer and former four-star rated running back Dalen Hollywood Smothers. He's committed to NC State. Smothers is from the state of North Carolina, so this seems like it was a move for Smothers to be at a school closer to home, to be around family. I get it, and I wish nothing but the best for the young man and look forward to seeing him do some big things for the Wolfpack. And OU's running back room has taken a big hit. Three running backs hitting the portal. Smothers to NC State. Tawi Walker going to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And Marcus Major going to Minnesota, don't you know? Not sure if he's going to purify himself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. But he's up there to be a gopher. 
These are big losses, but oh, big losses, big butts. Do not panic. The Sooners running back room still looks stacked for 2024. Leading rusher Gavin Sawchuck is back for his third season and coming off of five straight games with at least 100 yards rushing. Man, when he's healthy, this dude is awesome. Sawchuck will be joined by the number one running back recruit in the country, Taylor Tatum, as well as talented in-state running back Xavier Robinson. Sooners are also bringing back 2023 freshman Caleb Hicks and junior Javante Barnes, who in 2022 had 550 yards rushing as a true freshman and looked great against Florida State. Battled all kinds of injuries last year, couldn't really get on the field. But you look at the rotation there. If these guys can stay healthy, this team will be dangerous running the rock. And I am totally stoked for the future of not only this team, not only that position, just Oklahoma football in general. Also, Dejon Terry. Jacob Lacey, Woody Washington, and Trace Ford are all coming back to help lead this defense into the SEC. Lots of these dudes wanted to come back and finish this journey together. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? I can. And on the offensive side of the ball, Jaleel Farouk is going to run it back. I think if this cat can put it all together and get totally focused, he's got a chance to be really good. We saw flashes of it. It was very rare that the first guy ever brought Farouk down, juked that fool, and always gained more positive yards. Just some mental lapses and mistakes. If he can clean that up, the sky is a limit. Totally stoked that Farouk. Is coming back. I think he can use it too, um, just to build on his skill set. And even though we've lost a handful of players, it feels like we are getting a very good influx of talent via the portal. Now, since we last met, the Sooners have added cornerback Jocelyn Malaska from Utah, kicker Tyler Keltner from Florida State, and defensive end Caden Woolard from Miami of Ohio. Offensive lineman Michael Tarquin from USC. And tight end Jake Roberts. Sounds hideous from Baylor. Also with Roberts, I'm starting to feel good about what's going on at tight end. And I'm feeling really good about what the Sooners are doing with the offensive line. Tarquin, 6'5", 300 pounds. He's made 28 starts playing both guard and tackle on both the left and right sides of the line. They'll be able to plug him in pretty much anywhere on the line. That's good versatility. It's great to have that. Lots of starts. Um, the tight end, Roberts, he was a star at Norman North. He's returning to Norman after a 23 catch, 231 yard, and one touchdown season in Baylor. He's adding more depth to the position. Sooners also brought in Bauer Sharp. And the dude everyone is completely stoked for is four star tight end Devon Mitchell. Mitchell is ESPN's number third ranked tight end. In the country, he reclassified from the 2025 season. Dude is 6'4", 245 pounds. And it looks like the Sooners have made a concerted effort to upgrade the tight end position. And they really needed to make some moves after losing Blake Smith and Jason Llewellyn to the portal. And of course, Stog, Austin Stog, they're going to the NFL. Great work here. Joe John going to be completely stoked. Malaska, the uh, cornerback from Utah. He's an Oklahoma native. 
He's going to join the Sooners as a preferred walk-on and will have three years of eligibility remaining. Six foot one, 185 pounds. He is joining a very stacked secondary room, but the Sooners were absolutely destroyed at that position by injuries in 2023. So I say the more depth, the more merrier. Get as many cats back there as possible. Another dude that's got me totally stoked is defensive end Caden Woolard. Woolard is coming off a nine and a half sack, 41 tackle, 12 TFL, two force fumble season. Dude brings a nonstop motor and will be another savage pass rusher. The edges are starting to look very scary in this Oklahoma defense. Get that beef in the trenches. Get these guys just screaming off the end. I think it's a bad thing for opposing quarterbacks next year. And more good news. It's just a short three month and 12 days or 14 weeks and five days or just under 2,472 hours until the OU spring game on April 22nd where we will get to see these dudes pad up and play for the first time. Oh yeah, baby. It's right around the corner. We're going to blink and it's going to be here, I'll tell you. But at least we don't have to wait until April to see a few of our former Sooners. Once a Sooner, always a Sooner. But now these guys are in the NFL, and the NFL playoffs are here. Playoffs? You talking playoffs? Yeah. I am talking playoffs. 16 former Sooners will have an opportunity to compete for a shot at Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. And God give it up, man. My dude, C.D. Lamb, coming off a beast of a season. 135 catches, 1,749 yards, and 14 touchdowns. Nine straight games with a TD. CD, my dude, getting it done. Lamb and the Dallas Cowboys host the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. One of three Sunday games. But it's Baker and Jalen doing battle on Monday night football playoff styles. As the Tampa Bay Bucks host the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen and the Eagles have been free falling as of late. Jalen's got the broken talon. It's been rough for the Eagles, but they are the defending NFC champs and will remain so until they are taken out. And Baker is looking to do just that. A super gutsy performance by Mayfield last week. Busted up ribs, bad ankle, doesn't matter. It wasn't pretty, but Bake found a way to get it done. Getting the Bucks into the playoffs. In doing so, my man Bake, Shake and Bake, earned an extra cool $1 million, okay? Bake is also working his way into a new contract. And if he can pick up a playoff win versus the Eagles, asking price. It's going to continue to go up like that little uh, mountain climber on the Price is Right. You know the hell I'm talking about. Good for Bake. So stoked for him. He has no cohesion since he's been in the league. He's bounced around, and it was sweet for him to be celebrating the Bucks, making it into the playoffs. At Carolina, where last year he was getting shit canned. And now one team is the worst in the league, and the other is going to the playoffs. And you know which one my man Baker is the quarterback of. Good for him. Also, good for Creed Humphrey, Lane Johnson, CD Lamb, Marvin Mims Jr., and Trent Williams. The Sooner Five were all named Pro Bowlers. And note to any offensive linemen out there, the high school variety, the transfer portal variety, 
the Sooners are putting Pro Bowl offensive linemen into the NFL. Just saying. Also want to say, make sure you like and subscribe to Sooner State of Mind on Apple Podcast and Spotify so you do not miss any of the good stuff. Also, head on over to Believe.com. That's B-L-E-A-V.com. Go to shows. Type in Sooner State of Mind. You are locked. We have a ton of great content. Every team, every topic, everywhere. Believe.com. If you want to watch Sooner State of Mind, head on over to YouTube. Search the Football Dudes. We are there. Once you find us, subscribe to that. And then it just shows up. Then everything is done for you. It takes all the work out of it. Just leaves you to enjoy all that football goodness. Mm, Yummy, yummy, yummy. Sooner State of Mind is brought to you by Bet Online. My name is Casey Mallon, and I am in a Sooner State of Mind. Y'all be good. <laughs>